Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a neurologist who enjoys making videos about all things brain related. I also enjoy making supplement review videos on supplements that are purported to affect brain health. Today I'll be discussing low dose lithium supplementation and its potential benefits for cognitive health. So lithium is primarily recognized for its use at high doses in treating bipolar disorder. However, in the past several years, there's been increasing attention toward its effects at lower doses. Low dose lithium supplementation has been advocated for enhancing mental well-being, mood, and cognitive function, as well as for its potential regenerative, anti-inflammatory, and anti-aging properties. Famous anti-aging YouTubers like Brian Johnson even incorporate low-dose lithium into their anti-aging protocols. In this video, I'm going to talk about whether there's enough clinical evidence to support these claims. I'm going to talk about potential safety concerns with low-dose lithium supplementation. The medical community is well aware of the potential toxic effects of high-dose lithium, which includes kidney damage, thyroid dysfunction, diabetes, and weight gain but are the same effects seen with low-dose lithium supplementation. We're going to talk about different forms of lithium because there's several forms, and we're gonna talk about whether any forms are more bioavailable or across a blood-brain barrier or are more, just more effective in general. I'll discuss high quality brands of lithium supplements. As I've emphasized in my previous supplement review videos, not all brands are created equally. The nutraceutical industry lacks regulation and this lack of oversight can lead to shortcuts by some supplement companies, which ultimately results in either the presence of toxic chemicals such as heavy metals or infectious agents or some brands may not accurately label the amount of active ingredients in their supplements. So that's why it's really imperative to conduct thorough research and choose brands that undergo third-party testing and adhere to good manufacturing practices or abide by the uh, US pharmacopoeia method. I've conducted some research to identify some reputable brands of lithium supplements that you may consider if you're interested in low-dose lithium supplementation. So what is lithium and is it actually essential to human health? Lithium is a very common substance. It's found in our Earth's atmosphere. It's found in the Earth's upper crust. Many locations on this Earth have lithium within the soil and within the water. So a lot of us get lithium through our water supply or through our food. There is an ongoing debate about whether our bodies and brains actually need it or not. Some lithium enthusiasts in the medical field claim that lithium is essential to the human body, while others in the medical and science community state that conclusive evidence is still lacking. The World Health Organization has included lithium in its report, Trace Elements in Human Nutrition and Health, and it placed it in group C, which identifies elements which are potentially toxic. Some possibly have essential functions, however. So lithium is placed in the same group as fluoride, lead, cadmium, mercury, arsenic, aluminum, and tin. Interesting side note, lithium was once a major ingredient in the soft drink 7-Up. In fact, the name 7-Up was given its name because seven is the elemental weight of lithium. And then the up in 7-Up referenced the mood lift that was associated with consuming lithium in the soft drink. How does lithium affect the brain? Although we don't know exactly how lithium works, it's thought to have multiple mechanisms of action. Lithium has shown neuroprotective effects in multiple brain regions. For instance, people taking lithium for bipolar disorder have been found to have increased gray matter volume in various regions of the brain associated with memory formation and social and emotional regulation. I'm not gonna go into details about these brain regions, but here's a slide that describes the specific regions of improvement for those who are interested. At the level of neurotransmitters, lithium modulates various neurotransmitters. It inhibits dopamine and glutamate. Now glutamate is the major excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain, and too much glutamate has been linked to injury and death of neurons. Lithium also promotes GABA, which is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter. At the cellular level, lithium modulates various cellular mechanisms. I'm not going to go into details with these, but I did want to make note of its effects on an enzyme called GSK3 because this is fascinating. So lithium inhibits GSK3 also known as glycogen synthetase kinase 3. 
GSK3 promotes neuroinflammation and aging by regulating epigenetic factors. GSK3 is overactive when someone is under chronic psychological stress, which thereby causes neuroinflammation. So this neuroinflammation can lead to impaired mood and memory. Compounds like lithium that can inhibit GSK3 may prove beneficial for improving mood and cognition caused by excessive psychological stress and its associated neuroinflammation. So what is the human clinical evidence? There's a lot of animal research with regards to lithium. I'm not going to cover that because I really want the human data. There's a big difference between rats and mice and humans. So I like to really focus on human clinical evidence. So that being said, let's talk about the human clinical evidence on lithium's effects on mental health. There have been multiple observational studies that have found that low-dose lithium consumption through water supply has been associated with decreased rates of suicide and violent criminal behavior. I found a systematic review that discovered a total of 16 human clinical studies, 13 of which were randomized controlled trials. Four out of the eight studies on mood and depression reported positive significant benefits with low-dose lithium. Three out of seven studies reported positive effects of low-dose lithium for mania in people with bipolar disorder. It is important to note that several of these studies were found to have a high risk of bias and therefore were not of ideal quality. When it comes to cognition and whether low-dose lithium can improve cognitive function, I found several articles about this. One involved a 15-month randomized placebo-controlled trial that found that 0.3 milligrams daily of lithium stabilized cognitive impairment with people with Alzheimer's dementia after three months of taking lithium compared to placebo. However, another study that I found of 70 people with mild Alzheimer's disease showed no significant improvement in cognitive functioning compared to placebo. Yet another study based out of Brazil found that people with mild cognitive impairment who took lithium daily had decreased levels of a marker for Alzheimer's disease known as P-tau, and they also performed better on cognitive tests compared to those treated with placebo. Another study performed in Denmark found an association between increased lithium levels in drinking water and lower risk of developing dementia. People with the highest levels of lithium in the drinking water were 18% less likely to develop dementia than the people who lived in areas with the lowest levels of lithium. A systematic review of low-dose lithium found four studies that measured low-dose lithium's effects on cognitive disorders. Three of the four studies were positive, and none of these studies were at a high risk of bias. With regard to lithium's anti-aging properties, multiple studies, both animal and clinical studies, have shown that lithium supplementation can extend health and lifespan. We don't know the exact mechanism of action for its anti-aging properties, but we think it has something to do with its effects on something called the telomeres. Telomeres are repetitive DNA sequences at the ends of chromosomes that protect the chromosomes from deterioration during cell division. Our body is made up of multiple cells, which each have 46 chromosomes. These chromosomes contain DNA. DNA is the blueprint for making all of the proteins in our cells, and when DNA gets damaged, it can lead to aging and cancer and a whole bunch of problems. So the telomeres at the end of the chromosomes help protect the DNA in the chromosomes from getting damaged. The issue is that telomeres shorten with each division. This shortening of telomeres contributes to cellular aging because as they shorten, the DNA they are attached to is less protected from damage and mutations. Lithium in multiple studies has been shown to be associated with preservation of telomere length. Multiple human studies have found that people taking lithium have preserved telomere length. I also found a study that discovered that people with bipolar disorder taking lithium had longer telomeres than healthy age-matched controls. Given that people with bipolar disorder have accelerated aging, this study suggests that lithium may potentially reverse aging by increasing telomere length. Moving on to additional studies that have measured the anti-aging properties of lithium, I found several large observational studies. These studies found that areas with higher levels of lithium were associated
associated with lower mortality or lower death rates. Another observational study found that trace lithium in drinking water is negatively linked with changes in mortality associated specifically with Alzheimer's disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. These are all chronic diseases associated with the aging process. Considering all of this information, the majority of these studies seem to indicate that low-dose lithium holds neuroprotective, mood-stabilizing, as well as anti-aging properties. However, larger and more rigorous studies, presumably randomized control trials, would be helpful to better understand and define the effects of low-dose lithium. What is the safety of low-dose lithium and how does it compare to high-dose lithium? Higher doses of any form of lithium can result in toxicity, often manifesting as lethargy, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, impaired balance, and muscle tremors. Also, prolonged exposure to high levels of lithium can adversely affect thyroid function and kidney function. At low doses, lithium seems to be well tolerated, however, and it seems to be safe based on the majority of the available data. The systematic review that I mentioned earlier that found 16 studies measuring the effects of low-dose lithium, they found that no safety concerns were raised in any of these studies. Also, 13 of the 16 studies explicitly reported good tolerability. I did find one separate study of individuals taking low-dose lithium, which revealed a higher likelihood of developing diabetes, cardiac rhythm problems or arrhythmias, weight gain, and thyroid dysfunction. If you're considering taking a supplement, there are several forms of lithium available. Each are bound to what's called a carrier, and a carrier is necessary for your body to be able to absorb the lithium. Lithium carbonate, is the type of lithium that is commonly prescribed for bipolar disorder, but it's only obtainable with a prescription. Over-the-counter options include lithium aspartate, lithium orotate, lithium citrate, and lithium chloride. Lithium orotate is the most common form of lithium available over-the-counter, possibly due to research suggesting its greater effectiveness at lower dosages attributed to its ability to penetrate cells and the blood-brain barrier more easily compared to other forms. It's important to understand that only a small part of a lithium compound actually contains the active form of lithium. For example, in lithium orotate, only about 3.83% of the compound is active lithium. And in prescription lithium carbonate drugs, it's about 18.8%. This difference can be confusing because prescription medications often list the dose based on the total amount of lithium compound, while supplements focused on the amount of elemental lithium, which is what you're you're actually wanting. You want the total amount of just the lithium, not the whole compound. So it's really important to be aware of this when you're reading the labels. How much should you take? Limited research has been conducted on dosages of low-dose lithium, so it makes it challenging to determine exactly how much you should take. In the studies referenced earlier, a daily dose of 0.3 milligrams to 5 milligrams is generally used. Psychiatrists advocating for the mental health benefits of low-dose lithium have suggested a range of anywhere between 1 to 5 milligrams of elemental lithium daily. It's important to note that this pertains specifically to elemental lithium. For those of you who are interested in high quality third party tested brands. Here is a list of high quality brands that have passed quality and safety testing. This is not an exhaustive list. These are simply the brands that I've found based on my own research. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and comment. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe. We'll catch you later.